Hey everybody, so I have here on me the Royal Flex Pie. This is the world's first commercially available foldable phone, beating even Huawei and Samsung to the punch. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, this phone sucks, right? Well, actually, no, it doesn't. I actually use this phone as my daily driver for the past two or three days, and it's quite usable. Now, there is one crucial flaw that will make it a non-starter for a lot of my viewers, but I think as a piece of cutting-edge technology, you have to respect this thing. It's too harsh to say that it sucks. In fact, 80% of the negative videos you see on YouTube right now are outdated because most of those videos were from CES, which was about seven months ago. And at the time, Royo first showed off this phone for the first time, and the software was very janky. Um, I remember watching the Verge's video, like it wouldn't even, the orientation wouldn't even rotate, uh, not properly as I rotate the phone. But as you can see now, the Royal Flex Pi has fixed that problem. It's rotating every single time, and the display is intelligently telling the difference between a small screen or a large screen. You see, so the software has been fixed. So that means most of the negative videos you see from CES, they're no longer relevant because the stuff they were complaining about is no longer true. And then in recent months, the only videos we've gotten is from MKBHD, Unbox Therapy, and like a couple of dudes, one from China, one from Malaysia. Well, of all those people, only the guy from China actually tested this phone thoroughly. He actually brought the phone outside, out and about. Everyone else, such as MKBHD, he even admitted he didn't even put a SIM card into the phone. And Unbox Therapy, he shot his video entirely in real time. So he basically unboxed the phone and shot the video there. So that means the entire video is really just his first 10 minutes of using the phone. Well, that's not how I review phones. I actually want to make phones I review my daily driver for at least three or four days before I give an opinion. And that's what I've done right here. So the Royal Flex Pi, I've actually been using this thing as my main phone for the past three days. Took it out and about as you see, and this thing actually fits into my pocket. See, it's not as bulky as people make it out to be. I mean, I'm wearing kind of skinny pants for now. There's a little bit of a bulge, but not too bad overall. It fits into my pocket. Okay, but first let me talk about the crucial flaw with the Royal Flex Pi that will make it a non-starter for a lot of you watching. So this phone basically cannot run Google Apps. And I don't just mean it doesn't ship with Google Apps. There are other phones you buy from China that don't ship with Google Apps, but you can install on the side. This phone, even if you install Google Apps on the side, which I've done here, it just cannot run because there is no Google infrastructure. It, it, this phone straight up cannot run any Google apps at all, other than Chrome. Chrome somehow works, but it can run the app YouTube, it can't run Gmail, it can't run Google Maps, Google Docs. So that's gonna be a major, major deal breaker to a lot of you watching. But we have to take into context, this phone was made in China for Chinese people. And in China, people don't use those apps, so you can't really say this phone's a, a fatal flaw because it cannot run these apps that people in a native country don't use anyway. And there is a workaround. So even though you can't, run the app uh, YouTube on this, you can actually, if you go into youtube.com, then you can run YouTube on here. And then it'll play videos just fine. And this screen is awesome for watching full screen media, just because it's large, 7.8 inch, and the speaker up top is actually pretty loud. So let me increase the volume. I'll do a more in-depth speaker test later on. So other than the fact that you can now run Google Apps on this natively, everything else about this phone actually works pretty well. Like I said, all the bad reviews have been a little bit too harsh. But you look at this hardware, this is pretty impressive. This hinge, it's actually pretty sturdy. And when you close it, I really like this little, this uh, satisfying click. That kind of what you get from the Samsung Galaxy Fold. I like it a lot. So the back of this hinge is covered by this kind of Kevlar-like fabric. It looks a little bit cheesy and tacky, but it feels sturdy. I don't know why um, some reviewers have been poking fun at this. I actually think it's pretty sturdy. I mean, look at it. It's, it stays intact and you can even prop the phone up like so. And as I already said, the software is actually smart enough that you can switch orientation and you see the software keeps up. And it'll go between full screen and small screen pretty easily. In fact, when you're playing games, you can switch between large screen or small screen in real time and the game won't stop. The game will just keep going as you're switching between a 7.8 inch full screen or a smaller 4 point something inch screen. That's pretty impressive software in my opinion. So you have to give kudos to Royale because at CES, the software is very janky and they've done a good job of cleaning it up. 
So let's look at the hardware. This is a 7.8 inch plastic OLED display because it's plastic. So obviously it doesn't, it doesn't feel as smooth as a glass screen. When you run your finger on it, there's a little bit of blotchiness. The texture is a little bit weird, but you know, viewing angles on this looks good. I mean, just the fact you can bend the whole damn screen just looks super, super impressive. The resolution on this is 1920 by 1440, which is crisp enough for even 7.8 inches in my opinion. Although if you go into something like Instagram where you blow everything out a little bit larger, then you see images don't look as sharp as I would usually like them to be. But this is still, I mean, just the fact that you can go on Instagram on a full screen tablet size uh, display, it looks really impressive. And then if you close the screen, it actually jumps back into smaller Instagram. So you see the app ecosystem, the software interface, the UI, everything is pretty well integrated. So another cool thing you can do with this large screen is you can go into split screen mode. So you just have to tap on a multitask, tap on this little icon, and you see on the right, I can now choose from a series of apps. Now, not all apps are supported, so Instagram is not. I can go into, say, Twitter, and now I have Twitter on the right, and then a web page on the left and I can resize the windows too. So that's pretty damn cool. This phone is good for multitasking. So this phone runs on Android 9 with Royale's software skin on top. It's called Water OS and it's very shiny. So that means there is no app tray. All the apps go on the home screen and as I mentioned, it doesn't ship with Google nor does it support Google apps. But other than that software, you know, it's okay. You have a notification shade that works just as advertised. You swipe to the left, you have a little fitness tracker right here, and then you here you can display like your favorite picture. So right now I just have Kawhi Leonard hitting the shot over Philadelphia. You have shortcuts right here. And you go into settings, you actually have edge screen shortcuts too. Unfortunately, you don't get to choose what kind of apps you can put into it. So you see you only get camera, Alipay, WeChat Pay, voice recorder. WeChat and Alipay are apps that every Chinese person use. So these are actually very useful. So when a phone is folded like this, you have this edge shortcut. You just have to swipe down from here, tap on Alipay, and all of a sudden it goes straight into Alipay. This is the app that everyone in China uses to pay for things. So this is very useful to have a shortcut just like this. But I wish we would have been able to install our own shortcuts, such as like Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, any of that. Okay, so you know what we gotta do? We gotta do a video speaker test. Even though my girlfriend's holding the camera right now, I'm gonna play a K-pop video. So there's two speaker grills on the top of the device, or I guess the bottom, depending on how you hold the phone, and they actually get pretty loud. So let's test the sound. So this is about 60-70% volume right now. We'll go up to 100% volume. See, so the speakers on this is pretty good. So this is a pretty good multimedia consumption device. She's probably annoyed that I'm testing with a K-pop video. Well, I forgot to mention there are two cameras here. So there's a main 16 megapixel f1.8 lens and a secondary 20 megapixel depth sensor. Uh, the cameras are okay. When you're taking photos during the day, you're gonna get some okay shots, but at night, everything goes to hell. Like photos are very blurry, very noisy. Shutter speed becomes really slow probably to account for the fact that the phone needs to pull more light. So when you're taking pictures at night, photos just turn out blurry or slow half the time. Um, so in, in general, the camera on this thing sucks, especially when you factor in the price. But you know, nobody's gonna be buying this phone for the camera. They're buying this phone because of this. So I realized I forgot to talk about the chipset. So the Royal Flex Fly runs on Snapdragon 855 with six or eight gigs of RAM. So this configuration, it's on par with all the top Android flagships of 2019. And the battery, it's, I believe, 3,780 milliamp hour. So that battery capacity is not enough for a 7.8 inch screen. So I find that for on most days, the phone will not last me all day. This is a phone that if I leave the house fully charged in the morning, I'll need to charge it by about dinner time. But that's not too bad considering this is kind of like a tablet. All right guys, so I'm gonna take a minute to talk about my sponsor, Wondershare. So Wondershare's flagship software is PDF Elements Pro, now in version six. So this is basically the most professional business ready PDF editor available on the net. It converts PDFs to Excel, Word, HTML, RTF, any other text formats that you can think of. And once you have made the conversion, you can then make changes to the PDF directly 
on through the software like you would with Microsoft Docs or Google Docs. So you can change text, switch photos around, add a new different photos, anything. And the interface is clean, it's easy. And, don't, and it's not just my opinion. If you search PDF Element Pro on the internet, there are actually a lot of good reviews out there. So this is one of the best reviewed and most feature packed PDF software available out there right now. If you're interested in checking out PDF Elements Pro, you can go to wondershare.com and download a trial version of the software. So the Royal Flex Pi starts at 8,999 Chinese Yuan. That's about 1,200 American dollars. And at this price, obviously it's too expensive for most average consumers to consider because this thing can't run Google Apps and the camera is below average. But for tech collectors or phone enthusiasts, I think this is worth considering because this is the first product of its kind. I personally think this is gonna be the future of how smartphones are gonna be like. In, in our two or three years, we're all gonna have like a device that we, that we can pull out of our pocket and then unfold to maybe an um, eight inch, 10 inch, maybe 20 inch screen, who knows? But that's the future. And we're gonna look back years from now at the Royal FlexPi as the first of its kind. This phone is history. And I think because of that, we have to respect it. I don't know why so many people have been so critical about this device. It's trying something never before done before and we should applaud that as tech enthusiasts. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.